All right, so what's going on, lads, and welcome back to our Classic Master League with Classic Manchester United. We're taking a look at the team in a couple of minutes, and we're going to be bringing you match highlights from three games, so our first three games in the championship. Um, now, first things first, before we get off to, to our matches, I'm going to take a look at the team because we have a potential... Oh, I don't even know how to describe it. We have a huge problem on the, on the horizon because our team is just so stacked that our weekly wage is going to be is going to be crazy big so we're going to have to make a couple of decisions just to keep the team afloat in terms of selling people and trading them out or whatever because as you can see there our salary our weekly overall balance is going to be minus four million nearly five million pounds um <laughs> which is a is a huge problem um obviously we're going to be making money throughout the season depending on where we finish and stuff but in terms of the salary and that we do need to reduce that by quite a lot um and we're probably gonna have to sell a couple of players as well if we want to buy a couple of players so we'll get into that towards the end of the video as well but for now we're going to go into our first pre-match talk with Bubba Buddy and he's just saying that you know Fiorentina are a tough side but there's no reason to fear him and any team that has Rai Keane we're not going to fear anyone so we're going to go out we want a good start to this in the in the last episode we did have the Super Cup um which you know a lot of the feedback was let's just do kind of highlights of maybe three four games uh, video and i think that's probably the best way of doing it because you can kind of talk about the experience of it as well as give a couple of highlights but the boys just have a bula boss there and uh bubba buddy is going to be up for this one i can tell already so we are at old trafford for the first match roy Keane will lead out the boys ronaldo gets his first start but look at the opposition captain it is none other than batagal himself batastuta mr gola game um, he will be somebody that I'm going to have to stop today. But to be honest with you, I mean, these teams are so stacked that we're always going to be struggling, especially on the superstar difficulty. We're going to be struggling until we actually get our team spirit up. And at the moment, it is about like 75, 76. So I'm not expecting to win the first five, six games. Um, but look at Fiorentina's team. I mean, unbelievable. Unbelievable. Passarelli at the back. Batistuta, Luca Toni, Socrates feeding those. Dunga on the bench as well. He's not even playing told those on the bench as well for some reason um there is dunga there and the kits look absolutely fantastic rio ferdinand starts today ronaldo starts today edward starts today a couple of people were asking for him in the comments in the last episode so we said that we would put him in and see what he could do because he is young and he's got massive potential he's like 91 overall i think he's only like 23 in this master league playthrough so we're going to kick off with gary neville up the right going to pass it to georgie best bestie i'm expecting a lot of things out of him but Ronaldo is going to be the guy that I really kind of try get the progression on him and try and develop him as best as possible. Um, and pretty much just kind of play him in different positions to see where he suits best. I don't want to just play him out and out like wide player um, because I do want to kind of bring him his passing and develop his passing and stuff. But at the same time, you know, wherever he's going to be scoring goals, assisting goals and just being an overall beast, I am going to play him. So again, feeling out the opposition. First game in the league, <clears throat> it's always going to be a little bit messy at the start. Luca Tony, absolutely butcher him early doors. That's what you have to do sometimes, just set the marker. So we lost possession. Maria Ferdinand is just waiting for his chance to actually nail somebody. And Luca Tony is the guy that gets on his, his foot on the ball. And then Rio Ferdinand gets a foot on him. So that is what we're going to have to do. We want to be a tough, competitive, competitive team. Um, but again, Fiorentina looked very, very good. Soccer has got an early chance in there as well. But Schmeichel saw it the whole way. And in fairness, lads, we have a, like we have an unreal team. Let's let's be honest. But all the classic teams in it, like all their players are like 85 overall or above. So it's not like we're going to be able to blitz through this on superstar difficulty. Um, a couple of people asking for legend difficulty. We will see about that. What a pass from Roy Keane to Denny Irwin gives it in. Oh, but it's Roy off the post. And that was our first chance of the game. And, uh, you know, you're going to have options like this where you've got Duncan Edwards, Bobby Charlton on the bench. He can come in. And I want to highlight something like this as well because this is the things that I love in Master League that I'm seeing. Just look at this for an animation. You would never see something like this in my club. Beautiful. Just kind of like a standing kind of clearance with the head. Um, but Fiorentina, from about the 35th minute onwards, started to kind of do stuff like this. Now, Roy Keane absolutely bullies Batistuta off the ball and brings it out. But they just started playing these little intricate triangle passes, and I was finding it really hard to just keep possession. Absolutely butchers Ronaldo there. Um, the AI has really improved, I think, since the last patch as well, where they'll actually foul you uh, professionally and kind of like take you out your stride and stuff. And I've also found as well, and this is something that I want I want you guys to test if you're playing Master League. If you start like going in with a couple of slide tackles in the first half, 
the AI actually start going in with a couple of slide tackles throughout the course of the game a bit more. Like, they kind of play you how you play them. Um, and I've noticed it a bit when I've been sliding in and out. We'll see towards the end of this video against Valencia, I think, in the, the third match, um, or the fourth match, I think, we play. Like, there's absolutely some crunching tackles going in from all from all angles. Roy Keane brings it back out. Georgie Best, what about that for a first-time pass to Ruud van Nistra? He's already hit the post, or hit the crossbar. Can he score this one? Ruud! Can't get the finesse finish, just curled around. Uh, the keeper beaten, but not to be. And look at Bubba there. Bubba's sick, but he says, look, okay, I appreciate the chance. George Best had a brilliant uh, pass as well, so we'll take that. Luca Tony coming into it. Batis a little 1-2, but Vidic stops the rot. Gives it back out to Kino. Kino to Ronaldo. Ronaldo's going to just surge through the middle, right into the heart of the Fiorentina defence. Waiting for the overlap. Gives it to Bobby. Bobby's going to have a smack noise. Not into Ruf, and it's Roy! And again, it's a beautiful save from the keeper. But listen, this is what you have to do. You know, you have to just keep keep going at the superstar AI. Keep going at these teams. Um, you know, you can't really play how you play online because you you know it's all one-two passing and whatever. But that is a bad result. I suppose it's not the worst result for our first game out as a draw with Fiorentina because I expect Fiorentina to be in the top top half of the standings. But Bubba Buddy is going to be saying, and to be honest, lads, actually, I'm going to be checking what Bubba Buddy is sipping on that coffee cup because he never fucking leaves it out of his hand. Um, but yeah, we're going back into another match here against none other than Nottingham Forest. And as you can see here, um, this is going to be, this is actually a bit of a crunching match as well. There's some really good tackles gone in here as well. A bit of bully boy ball, um, or bully ball boy, bully ball, bully ball. Yeah, uh, that's going to be kind of how this game went. And it was, there was no real ebb and flow to it. Apart from the first kind of couple of minutes, I'd say the first, maybe 15 minutes, it just kind of petered out then. Trevor Francis gets in there, he has a shot on target, and it's not going to go in. Nigel Clough was in the middle of the park, Stone is up front, they had Martin O'Neill on the bench, he came on. Denny Irwin gets caught out under the high ball here around the 30 minute mark, this was their best chance I think, Francis back in again, and uh, again it's just too, too wide at the post. But as you can see lads, it was just bombardment after bombardment of waves of waves after waves of attack, that was another lucky enough escape there um but we did eventually start to get on the front foot and as you can see there it's a crunch and tackle in and this was kind of the start of it because there's a load of tackles that went in and this francis again hugging the right flank rio ferdinand comes out and then i just stopped and i just decided to stand back and i shouldn't have done that then denny Irwin goes in he's going to go in for a cruncher but he gets the interception and then we're going to go in with a cruncher here beautiful that's what i like to see lads a little bit of blood a little bit of um toughness and let them know that you're there early doors even though it's 40 minutes into the game that's what you have to do sometimes. And Denny Irwin from here. I, I was just I was just kind of... In this game, like, some of the games, they're all different experiences. Like, you know, that's the best thing about Master League. And I'm enjoying Master League more than I have done in the last five or six years within the Pez series. But some of the games, you just can't get your foot in the door at all. You just you just have to kind of pass it all the way around um, and look for openings. This little nice one-two with Beckham and Neville. Beautiful ball in. And Andy Cole, who's come on, slots at home with a lovely header down the middle. And that's what you have to do sometimes. Instead of going like route one, little triangles, one twos, um, Bubba Buddy has given the instruction at half time. You know, use the corners, cross it in. You've got Beckham and Gary Neville who have excellent deliveries and just do the little overlap. First time cross in, Andy Cole, excellent movement inside and buries it in the back of the net. And it is 1 0. Are we on our way to our first victory in the championship this season? It looks like we could be, unless Forrest have something up their sleeves. It's a powerful header as well from Andrew, but it is uh, 1 0 to United. And this, this is where the game kind of nearly changed, right? Stan Collymore comes on, lads. And I swear to God, he was just like Superman. It was it was like I was the Terminator up front for him. He was just getting chance after chance. He was doing some crazy stuff. And we'll see here in a couple of minutes. And this goes back to the Master League experience as well. It is a different experience compared to my club. It's just completely different. The gameplay is completely different in how the AI approach you. Here's his first chance. So pulls out a brilliant save there from Schmeichel. They get a corner out of it. But that was his first chance after coming on. Literally about two minutes. Um, and again here you can just see Martin O'Neill goes in strong uh, on Beckham. And then Cantona goes back in on him. And I thought that I should have got free here with Beckham. That's why I went in so hard with Cantona. But again this is the fight I want to see with, with the boys and from the team. And the ref is going to have to book a couple of more of us throughout the season I think. Because we're going to be going hardcore on this. Martin O'Neill left Beckham on the ground in a heap. And then Cantona comes in and just absolutely butchers through him as well. So this was probably around the yeah the 80th minute. I'm just seeing it here, and look at this from Collymore, lads. Like I mean, it's just crazy, 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 crazy stuff. But that was all they kind of had to muster. They didn't get the equaliser, and as you can see there, after two games played, we've one win, one draw, four points, 
Um, we've only one goal scored and none conceded, so our goal difference is only one, but we will see what happens in the future. Now, a bit of negotiation uh, news we have here. Eric Cantona comes in with what I would consider an absolutely disgustingly disrespectful uh, proposed transfer from Liverpool of 52 million. Now, straight away I was thinking, why are Liverpool offering so low? And then I realised that his contract was up next summer. So I was like, okay, I'm going to boost up Eric Cantona's con uh, contract for his weekly salary. See how much he wants. You know, leave his release fee in if he wants it there. Give him an old goal bonus or, or, or that. And then I decided to go through the rest of the team and just do them. So anyone that was up for contract negotiation in 2020, I pretty much just gave them what they wanted because I can always, you know, with a five-year contract, you can always sell them if the salary is too high. We're going to have an episode where we sort out all the salary, all the weekly wages, all that sort of stuff. And obviously look at some players. I might do it in a second, actually. Look at some players that we would potentially like to buy um, after the first season so I do plan on maybe selling one or two to clear the books and have a bit of money there and then next season proper be able to buy a couple of players and put our own stamp on the team put Bobby Bobby Bobby, Bobby Buddy's stamp on the team so we will see and we'll have a look at our, our list but Ronaldo is probably one of the guys that I would really target and they're obviously going to be resistant in parting with one of their key players at Real Madrid but like am I going to be able to pay afford to pay the release fee I probably will if I want to um you know he says there that the sports director's comments say he would welcome a move to our club where he'd be given a more significant role I think I'm okay for strikers at the moment but what I don't have is like a blistering fast kind of striker and obviously Ronaldo would be one of the best in the business now I know I have Georgie Best but Bestie is more of kind of like an attacking midfielder kind of winger player um and it's it's kind of somebody that i need i need somebody very direct for my style of play like ronaldo um or maybe even somebody like mbappe but i don't really want to be buying you know non-classic players let me know in the comments below if you would like me to buy somebody like mbappe or something i mean his release fee is absolutely crazy um at 300 million or whatever but do you want me to stick to the classic because uh i think that that's the best kind of team to have with this especially for the first maybe year or so um our season or so instead of kind of buying different types of players i do want to see where these guys end up uh when i do turn on the transfers but kaka would be another one i was thinking then maybe i could switch to a, like a proper 442 with like scolzi um or 451 sorry with scolzi keen and then kaka as an attacking midfielder like i play online and have my two wide wingers in ronaldo on the left or gigs and then beckham on the right or ronaldo so it would be it would be interesting our bestie obviously um you know or we could play a 4-3-3 three, three with you know skulls kind of barcelona style skulls uh keen and kaka or whoever i do buy um so it will be interesting to see but i think a striker is what i want to want to look at and we'll we'll kind of we'll kind of see why in a couple of minutes because some of my strikers on board on the squad that aren't even starting most games um are just taking up such a massive weekly salary that if i want to play this for another season or two i'm going to have to make huge changes to the squad so we will see what happens but anyway that's another day's story we're going on to valencia now so this is going to be our third game in the championship Raikin leads the team out again the great dane is in gold so he's a massive man look at him absolute colossus but hopefully we can get another win here today but valencia have an insane team um they're one of the dark horses for this for this uh this top three finish that we do need to get up promotion into the classic premier league or classic premier division and uh it is going to be always difficult to to play each team because i haven't played them before um so i don't know who to look for like in the last game i was kind of transfixed with keeping it tight and you know scoring on the counter against fiorentina i was kind of looking at stopping bad as shooter um but in this game i think i kind of lost sight of what i wanted to do and valencia just kind of were playing it around for the first part you can see here in this passage of play they were just li literally just kind of playing it around and seeing what was working nearly catching up with a long true ball there but beckham takes it under his control and i give a crazy pass up give him back in you know they watch the possession and a yale is going to release that across the right hand side to angloma back to mendieta mendieta was an absolute beast of a player i remember him amar kempes they've got a really good team um that's the first chance for him kempes gets the ball in here it's a strong challenge from vidic could have been a penalty but I don't think it was. I think that it was a strong challenge. And once you lead with your shoulder in Pez, um, when they do that animation, it's very rare that they actually give a penalty. Now, if you lead with your foot, as we will see, um, it's going to be bad news for you. But 
they have weaknesses in this team and this is why i was kind of hoping that i could target those weaknesses um Amar hits the cross or hits the post there gets back out to mendieta mendieta swings it back in and it is cleared again out to roy Keane. And Albelda, I remember Albelda, they played against each other against you know Ireland and Spain. And again, first time through ball to Georgie Best. Now this is where Bestie needs to be excelling. He brushes him off the ball, Marchena, and then it is a fantastic tried finish, but he doesn't actually succeed because it hits the cross or the why am I getting the crossbar and the post confused, lads? I'm very bad. It hits the post, comes back out, I tried to swing it in, and this was our only kind of period of dominance in the game Roy Keane looking for an opening Ryan Giggs back out little dummy little bit of trickery gives it out to Denny Orwin touch and go that's not on Edwards forces it gives a ball in Dennis Law is inside Georgie Best again recycles it back out to Genev Genev back out to Keno Keno to Best and we're going to try and go out again but they actually counter us get it with Ruben Baraka and Baraka is going to be stopped again by Duncan Edwards who is actually a fantastic player in this game he's kind of like another Roy Keane in midfield it's probably overkill starting the two of them um and then gary neville goes into the book with a with a, a pretty tough challenge i will say um but that was kind of the run of the first 30 minutes of the game as you can see here georgie best to beckham this is probably our best chance should have done better one two works beautifully gets the ball in and beckham just hits a really really poor shot really terrible effort um denny Irwin. this is kind of where things took a, a downturn denny Irwin to roy Keane. i've acres of space force a pass first time touch from amar back out to baraja Baraja to get Baraka to Kempis, Kempis to Mendieta. Awaiting in the middle is none other than Vincente, and he slots at home. And it's 1 0 that we are down just before half time. It's an absolute killer. Um, but listen, these things happen. It was a bad mistake from Roy Keane, and the boys rub it in with a, a really kind of flashy uh, celebration. And Bubba Buddy is absolutely disgusted with that because that was totally my fault. I mean, I tried to force it with Keane. And I just kind of put myself under complete pressure for no reason, really. There was no pro there was no problem. There was no hassle on me at all. Just a complete unforced error. And uh, I should have done better there. But it is what it is. And from here, in the second half, I had kind of just had bad luck after bad luck, really. I mean, you know, Valencia were starting to play a little bit. Um, they just seemed to be able to keep possession so easily. Um, and it was just one of these things and again here's where I'm talking about with Gary Neville and talking about the, ch the challenges when you're holding the pressure button and they go in with the, the foot rather than the, sh the shoulder barge um, so we do concede a penalty now there is a very controversial decision at the end of this video in about two minutes or three minutes time um, or maybe less like a minute left minute less uh, but that is kind of a thing where I'm saying you have to look at the collision system in PEZ that way it isn't good enough to be able to kind of take that as a free. I mean, it is obviously a free, uh, or it is obviously a penalty because I do make contact with his foot. But I think it's the animation that looks clumsy. You know, it's not the actual fact that um, I didn't make contact with him, but it just happens to be that it looks that way. So this is our kind of chance that we get back. Ryan Giggs gets it in, gives us a little bit of hope. It's 2-1 with like 18 minutes left to go in normal time. And Giggs is definitely thinking we can win this one back. He's after coming on as a sub. Um, and he's saying, come on, boys, let's rally around. Let's get this goal. Let's get the equalizer. I brought on Scolzi as well. Bubba Buddy making the executive decisions. Beckham comes off. Roy Keane looking for an opening. Again, get caught in possession. It wasn't Keane's best game. And again, there on the attack, we op we get it back with Duncan Edwards. Gives it back to Ronaldo. And that kind of summed up our game going forward offensively. Bubba Buddy is disgusted with that one as well, but he keeps his composure. And again, now this is something that I really need to talk about. Um, this is kind of shocking really to me because I've slid in here, but the only reason I slid in is because I'm trying to pass the ball. And as you can see, the power bar came up and uh, Rio Ferdinand tries to throttle the referee and then hits Gary Neville in the head. But apart from that, you can just see here, I actually tried to slide in to pass this. And Gary Neville just goes in and just takes the man, but he had the ball already gone. Um, that was very frustrating for me, especially when I kind of felt, look, I probably wasn't going to win this game. Um, but I mean, what am I meant to do? You know, what am I meant to do? I'm trying to clear the ball. Giggs goes down uh, for the injury there and it is our first loss. So yeah, I mean, as he says, it hasn't been a bad start, but we should be aiming higher. Let's win some more. So we will be trying to do that. But that's pretty much it for episode three, lads. I hope you've enjoyed this. I hope it hasn't been too long of an episode. Let me know if you're enjoying these. Let me know what you want to do with our transfer policy. Do you want us to buy some players in January? Or will we wait the full season and see what this classic Manchester United squad can achieve? We probably will have to sell one or two. So let me know what you guys think. Let me know if you like these longer episodes with the highlight packages as well. And uh, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. And uh, yeah, that's it. Good luck.